If you are a Mac user or even have a retail PC that you didn't build yourself, you know that the device is pretty good at getting some things done. In fact, with the Mac, it's good at getting a lot of things done, but it's not good at one thing, and that's intensive graphical processing. Uh, graphical processing can be used for all kinds of things, ranging from AR and VR development to consuming AR and VR content. It can also be used to edit high-end 4K video, and it can be used to play video games. The Mac, however, has a terrible reputation as a gaming machine and as a high-end productivity machine. You will need to do something Apple recommended this past summer, and that is build an eGPU. The new version of Mac OS has support, built-in support, for external GPUs. For years, external audio, external keyboards, external peripherals of all kinds dominated the Mac landscape, and now you can plug in a GPU and fire up real performance. And in fact, this video right now is being produced using an eGPU that I put together using the tips and tricks provided by our friend, Ali Zahed. Ali is a product designer, a developer, and a hardware hacker based in both Dubai and Karachi. And Ali really helped figure out how to learn how to build external GPUs uh, for use with a Mac. Now, you can use these with a PC as well, but often with a PC, it's more uh, uh, compartmentalized so you can snap a GPU in. Mac users, pay attention because this is your step-by-step -step guide to building an affordable, high-performance external GPU. Ollie, uh, thanks for joining us today and taking a, a break from raid time. Uh, I know that uh, priorities being what they are, we first need to make sure that uh, we have, if we're gonna raid, we need high-performance GPUs. So, uh, first, you kind of figured this out and made a really interesting Tumblr post with step-by-step -step instructions as well as photographs. How did you first begin to, to experiment with plugging GPUs into a Mac machine? Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Um, when I first started this, it was because my MacBook, it was, it was an 01, particularly. Uh, 2013, late 2013 MacBook and playing World of Warcraft, which is the rating we we're talking about, was not very easy. Uh, bad frame rates, low resolution. Um, the, the MacBooks have the Retina screen, which is like an insanely high resolution thing. And they just don't have enough graphical power to power both the desktop and games. So, so I started looking into how I could make this uh, better for me. I installed Windows. On my on my MacBook, and and I try to get like more FPS out of the whole thing. That helped, but just not. It wasn't good enough for me to be you know playing regularly. So then I looked around to see what I could do more, and that's when I heard about eGPUs. Uh, it looked fancy stuff initially, and uh, it it but it was a lot easier than building a whole computer, and it just was not because of the travel and everything. I just was not ready to make that kind of commitment to a desktop machine. So I bought the stuff, which is quite easy. Uh, you, you just need literally three parts. You need a box, uh, an eGPU enclosure that is, which, uh, which has a PCI Express slot for your graphic card and any kind of LAN, usually um, Thunderbolt 2 or 3 now, uh, to connect your uh, enclosure to your computer. And then you need a PSU, a power supply unit. Um, anything would do, about 250 watts, because mo most graphic cards do not consume more than that. And finally, the best piece, the essential piece, the graphic card itself. So I got this this Akiyo Thunder Box 2 thing uh, back in the day, and it was like it was like really tiny thing. It was like this big, I think. You you have the same one, uh, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah, and, and that was a really small thing, and I was like. Huh, graphic cards are like twice the size of this. How am I going to fit something in here? And uh, then I looked around and I found just that there's such a thing as a mini GPU, which are like half the size of your full length GPUs. So I got one of those. I got a 970 back in the day. And I got a Silverstone, one of those uh, fully modular, tiny power supplies. And, um, and I built the whole thing together. Uh, it was it was not the it was not the easiest thing to build. Um, it was it was a bit hacky, 
it was not the safest either because I, I don't know what your setup looks like, but mine had the power supply on the side. You couldn't close the enclosure because the GPU, even though it was like the mini version, it was still too big for the whole box. And uh, and everything was like a mess, but it worked. And when I when I put the whole thing together, uh, I installed the drivers, got it to boot. They were like, I ran into a bunch of trouble. But once I was like past all that, I started playing GTA on like 60 frames per second. I was like, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So um, to, just to repeat back to you that process, you need three primary components, which is the GPU itself. You need a box, which is Thunderbolt 2 or 3 compatible, which is this is the component that connects your GPU to the PC or to the Macintosh and you need a power supply unit and if you've ever built your own computer these components all seem very standard and easy to understand but if you've never done hardware hacking these things can seem intimidating and like you pointed out it can seem unsafe now most of the process is entirely safe we take no liability for uh, uh, mistakes that may happen but uh, as long as your exposed wiring is covered, and most power supplies come with uh, nice cloth covers to, to protect the external wiring, uh, you, you should be fine. There's one trick though, and that is, I remember uh, I instant messaging you in kind of a, a, a baffled state saying, Ollie, everything's working. Nothing's working. Why not? <laughs> And that's because I hadn't turned, I hadn't turned it on. There's no power switch. There's nothing to tell your power supply when to start and stop supplying the eGPU with power. So how did you figure that trick out? Right. So b before we get to that, I just want to point out that like when I said safe, unsafe, I didn't mean that like there's any exposed wires because all of that stuff is insulated. Uh, the the box even even when it's open, there's no chance that you can get electrocuted. That's like all right. safe. But I just meant. Like it's it's like open there on the box. If I spill something, and I'm a I'm a clumsy guy, I've spilled stuff on my on my Mac all the time, and you could easily blow away your uh, you know couple hundred dollars. Investment. Yeah, but also so Joe, getting, we want to make sure that when people are messing around with electronics, that they are also safe, and we encourage yeah. you to do Google searches uh, about all of the products you end up buying and about safe use of electronics but like you said this this is a fairly this uh, is again extremely yeah. safe just wear right. like uh wear rubber slippers and you're like you're golden right. yeah so uh right returning to the power switch thing now um on 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 computers whether it's a mac or an actual pc or a desktop or whatever um you have you have a power button of some sort or the other uh but when you build this eGPU thing there is no power button because uh, you don't have one of those PC cases or a computer with a, with, a, with an actual button. There's two things you can do. One, you can buy a power button. Uh, I, think, I think they run about less than $10 on Amazon or uh, probably cheaper on eBay. But the thing that I did is the old classic uh, paperclip trick. Um, so the, 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 the wires, the connectors that connect your uh, GPU to your, uh, to your power supply you, you'll see that one of those wires, this, this can be found online quite easily in, in, your, uh, in your power supply is a, a manual as well, that there's, there's two specific small pins which are for power and you just need to connect them once and that's gonna like boot your thing up and get you running. And uh, with the, with, like back in the day when I built the setup, there was this weird, because Mac did not have official support for eGPUs. So you have to do this trick when um, when you're booting. You have to make sure that you boot Windows first. And, and like Mac OS didn't support eGPUs at all. So you have to boot into Windows to get uh, to like uh, make make use of the eGPU. So you would like turn the whole thing on, uh, turn your Mac on, and then within within two seconds you have to turn the whole GPU and like everything on as well. But but it should not be powered on before your Mac. Is booted up like back then it was like a whole hassle it was a, a and, tremendous and, yeah I, th I think i think yeah I, th I think it was i think it was probably easier for you because i've heard that like the gpu that you got had better power management 
than the one I got. Yes. And this is, we should say that uh, no matter what you buy, do your consumer research into the, the GPU and anything uh, earlier than the current NVIDIA chipset is on the 10 series, but anything earlier than that is not officially supported on the Mac. You can get it to work and it works wonderfully uh, on Windows. You can use Boot Camp to fire up Windows and it runs wonderfully with no problems. I never think about this entire convoluted setup process. Yeah. But what you just described was my initial process when I, I first had to fire this up and get it going. You may also experience some of these challenges trying to get your particular operating system, whether you, if you're in Linux or if you're an older version of Mac OS, you may experience some challenges. So I feel like everything that you're describing, Ali, is kind of the exception to the rule or the exception that proves yeah. the rule. Um, yeah. But the end result uh, that you just described is eyes wide open. Holy yeah. cow. I'm, you don't yeah. just have to play video games. You can edit 4K video in 60 yeah. to 90 frames. It, it opens up a, an entire new world of computing and processing. You can run yeah, applications faster. Um, uh, artificial yeah, it was, intelligence. It was a, it's a whole whole new experience because, uh, like, I had a PS4 at the time, and I and I was playing GTA 5 on it, but the whole 4K plus 60 frame rates experience was right. That's uh, yeah. in fact, that should be the headline. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So, Ali, are there any steps that we have missed or forgotten? Of course, we have a post on Tech Republic and we will link to Ali's yeah. post. We'll also include your photos here. But did we miss anything or forget anything that's critically important to the process? Um, let's, let's do another rundown. Get the components ready. Connect them. Get boot camp. Or I think now, now Mac OS High Sierra has built-in support for eGPUs so you can use them on your Mac OS as well. Uh, make sure everything is connected, boot up, and yeah, you're good to go. I think that should do it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we would love to hear your feedback on this process. If you have built your own external GPU, you can let us know by visiting Tech Republic, and you can visit, uh, Ali, what is your Twitter account? It's Ali Zahid Zero. Ali Zahid Zero on Twitter for, uh, I don't know if you're willing to be tech support, but uh, uh, certainly a testimonial to the, uh, the, the wonderment that is running a Mac with a fantastic external GPU. For Tech Republic and ZDNet in New York, I'm Dan Patterson.